Okay, welcome today to A Few Minutes with Beep. This is Darwin Gross. This week we're going to be taking a look at some of the interface options, particularly interface options between Visi and Beep. So what I first of all did was create a basic sequencer pant, a sequencer with a global transport, with a little sequence. We're going into Cloud Oscillator, which gives us a super solid kind of sound. I'm controlling it with an AD envelope, going into a little synchronized delay, and into the stereo output. So if I turn on my global transport, you get this sort of standard sound. And I can quickly dial in just different sequences. I can also control the gating of it as well. Okay, that's pretty standard stuff, and if you've been following the video series thus far, you probably know how to do this already. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually try and get some audio reactive visuals going along with our sequence. So what I'm going to do is unlock the patch. I'm going to go into the sidebar Visi option. This is where all the Visi modules are located. I'm going to start off using the input device called Player which is just a simple video player. I'm going to open up my sidebar of videos and I'm going to grab the countdown video, drag it into the player, and it immediately starts playing. Next, I'm going to take an effect called the pixelator, which basically gives us pixelated output. It really is easy to see, so we're going to use that guy. And then I'm going to finally output using the viewer object, which gives us a little impatch or viewer. So it's pretty straightforward. I select my video here, and now I get my pixelated output. It's all good and fine, but what I really want is I want the output of my sequencer to be controlling something in the pixelation. In this case, I want to control the horizontal pixelation. So what I'm going to do is I can't really take the output of the sequencer and use it directly in the Visi object because the ranges are different because this is audio output and this is max event input. If you don't know what that means, that just means it's two different kinds of data and it doesn't really work. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use this special kind of Visi module called a controller. Under controllers, which are different things that you can use to control Visi content, we're going to grab this thing called the Beep Converter. The Beep Converter does one thing really well. It takes contents from your Beep system and sort of formats it for the Visi system. So in this case, I'm going to take the output of my sequencer and put it into the audio input of my Beep Converter. Now, there's something else that has to happen to this. This little drop-down menu allows us to set the signal range. Beep, in general, is attempting to emulate the Eurorack modular system. So it tends to work in volts, and the output of the sequencer, it is actually emulating a negative 5 to 5 volt range, or the 10 octave range that's available within a Eurorack system. I switch to that range, then I'm going to unlock my patch, take the output of the beep converter, and put it into my horizontal input of the pixelator. And when I do that, you see it immediately jumps to a value. If I lock my patch and start my transport, you'll see that it kind of is matching the settings of the output of the sequencer. You can see the sequencer going down and up and up and up. That's exactly what the pixelator's uh, horizontal value does as well. So now if I change and get it a little chumpier sequence, I can get a lot more variation in my pixelator as a result of the variation in the sequence. Now this is all good and fine, but the only thing is, is that first of all, 
uh, we're only controlling one parameter. We control more than one parameter, but it's not very exciting. But also because we have a gate sequence, the output of the sequencer is happening regardless of whether or not the gates are happening. So we see values even when the audio signal isn't changing. What we can do is we can just have the envelope control not only the VCA output, but also the vertical pixelation of the pixelator device. So that way it goes down to zero whenever the sequence stops sounding. This way we'll get a little blackout. So what I'm going to do is unlock my patch. I'm going to grab another beep converter. In this one, I'm going to take the output signal from the envelope. I'm going to use that to control the vertical offset of the pixelator. Now, again, we have to change the range of the beep converter. The output range of an envelope is actually always positive. So it starts at zero and goes to positive five volts. So that's where the zero to five volt setting is going to be useful. And now what we'll see is that not only do we get horizontal control by my sequence, but the vertical control is controlled by the uh, envelopes attack and decay settings. So when I turn my transport on, we can see that it's much more closely tied to the sound because it's related to the gate output of the sequencer. So if I go to really short envelope settings, we barely get any result. But if I go to long settings on decay, I get longer spikes. And again, I can change up my sequence. Now this all works great. The one thing is it doesn't really take advantage of the output of the delay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this output from the envelope and instead I'm going to use the output from the left channel of the sync delay. Again, this is audio output, so it goes back to having to use negative 5 to 5 volt range, very similar to your rack systems. So we change ranges again, and we'll see that it automatically starts wiggling because there's some internal noise built into the system. But when I start my transport, it's actually more directly tracking the audio rather than tracking the gated output of the sequencer. All right, so it's a little bit more visible if we actually return to using the envelope and output. So I'm going to switch over to that. And instead, what we're going to talk about is another thing that's really important once you get a little better at max programming, and that's segmenting your patches. So in this case, we have audio in this patch, we have visual in this patch, we don't have a lot of screen pace, so already I'm feeling kind of cramped in my workspace. Generally speaking, what I like doing is I like separating my patches so that visual patches are in a separate patch from my audio work. But how do we make patch cords that move between patches? Well, let's give it a try. First of all, I'm going to delete all the Visi stuff other than our converters. And secondly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some virtual patch cords. Virtual patch cords are connections that are made by name rather than by a visual connection using a patch cord. So in this case, I'm going to take this sequencer output and I'm going to send it to a named patch location. In this case, I hit N to create a standard max object. Then I type send and then I give it the name of something. So I'm going to call it seek output. And now I connect the beep converter to my send. And so then the output of the beep converter is going off in an ether to anything else that can receive seek output as a destination. Now I'm going to also do that for the envelope. And I hit N again 
to make a standard max object. And we're going to use the abbreviation for send, which is just an S. And then I'm going to put in env output. So I have envelope output going uh, out to something named env output. So now just for grins, I'm going to kick off my global transport and let it run. And I'm going to drop the volume just a bit while we work into it in another patcher. So to create another patch, I hit Command N, or I could just select New Patcher from the File menu. And I'm going to recreate my Visi patch. So I'm going to go into the Input, grab a player, go into the video, grab a countdown, drop it in, let it run. I'm going to go into my effects, again select my pixelator, and then go into my output and select a viewer. So this is just recreating that same patch content that we had before, but in a completely different patcher. You can see it's not reacting at all because in fact we don't have any of those beep converters routed at all. So what I have to do is I have to connect to my virtual patch cards. And again, we, we do this. The way we do it is we hit an end to create a new max object. Then we do receive. And then the name of the output. So in this case, seek output. That gives me the sequencer output that I developed in the audio patch sent over to the visual patch. Now I could just run this to my horizontal input and I immediately get the reactivity from the sequencer. And then similar to how we used a shortcut name for the envelope output, I hit N to create a new standard max object. I do R for receive and then ENV output for the name. That gives me the envelope output and I can run this to my vertical pixelation offset. Now I have a separate patch that's just my visuals, but I'm able to get all my data from my sequencer patch in real time. So hopefully you find this useful. Hopefully you start playing around with the idea of mixing and matching your beep audio output with some Visi based visual reactive content. And you can have a lot of fun matching the audio and the visuals together. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.